that. Welcome to Accelerated. I'm your host, Vitaly Golomb. On this season of the podcast, we're hearing from some of the global leaders in everything electric and autonomous, moving us quickly into the future. On this episode, I speak with Claire Jones, the Chief Commercial Officer of What Three Words, the world's first addressing system designed for voice that is used in 170 countries and is being adopted by governments all around the world as an official addressing system. Previously, Claire was involved in the development and growth of social enterprises and in impact investment. She was also featured in the 2019 Forbes 30 Under 30 list for technology. We spoke about her upbringing in a UK village which had no addresses and how it brought her to what three words, how navigation is becoming much more precise with the help of the service, and the lives it has saved in emergency situations and much more. Claire, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, welcome to Accelerated. Um, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you today. Uh, we, we've never met before, and uh, I've, I've certainly heard about the company and it's been making waves for some number of years here. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, talking about what three words and your background. So I'd like to start at the beginning, and I'd like to understand, you know, how, do you, how did you grow up? Well, good question. Um, I, uh, well, I grew up in a big family. I've got three sisters who are all incredible. Uh, we're very close in age, so it's like having three ready-made friends. Uh, so the four of us, uh, my mum was a teacher and my dad actually stayed at home to raise us. So uh, I know it's more traditional in some families for the, the mother to stay at home, but in my family, uh, my dad stayed at home to raise four girls, uh, which was a wonderful experience and has led to yeah lots of wonderful things in my life, I think, from having a slightly more unusual home setup, but one I was very, very lucky to have. And where did you grow up? Uh, in the UK, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, very bad addresses. Uh, it was very hard to find the house because it was in a village in the middle of nowhere. And uh, in the UK, they do this thing where if you live in a village, often they won't have house numbers, they'll have house names. And then very often you'll have a uh, house in the village with the same name. So you get each other's mail and you get to know your neighbors because you have to swap mail. Uh, but yeah, that was that. Uh, I grew up in the middle of nowhere in the UK. Very interesting. It, it's kind of uh, how the black cabs in London, the uh, the exam on that is very difficult. They have to know every single street and every single block. I guess it kind of goes back to that where the mailman in the village has to know every single house. And, and what did you study in school? How did you get interested in kind of what led you in this direction? Oh, so I, studies wise, it wasn't really related. Uh, I did English as an undergraduate and then uh, geography uh, for my master's degree. I guess that sounds related to, to where What Three Words ended up taking me. But uh, in reality, I loved books and I loved learning about books and literature and then uh, postgraduate studies was actually focused on um, my, my research was on around human trafficking so uh, kind of very different worlds um, but yeah that was that was what I studied well that's really interesting uh, you you know beginning of your career you really focused on on impact impact investing and all sorts of other causes um, what inspired you to take this path I mean I guess it's, it's kind of from your education but there was some inspiration behind it to take you there Oh, my parents, definitely. Uh, my parents were big activists when I was growing up. So we, they used to take us to protest marches and things. So uh, I had a bit thorough grounding in uh, trying to, you know, be involved in causes and, and try and make a, as much of an impact as you can in the world. So yeah, that was that was my parents. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Our, our parents uh, certainly put us in, the, in a certain direction, right? And we try to do that as parents as well. So uh, tell, talk about uh, some of the projects you were involved with and kind of your, your journey there. Yeah, so uh, a real range. Um, I used to change projects a lot. I used to get very bored very easily, uh, So, which is a good thing because it means you get to do lots of things and meet lots of great people and uh, change projects a lot, but it also gives you a very strange career journey uh, until I found what three words, actually. Uh, but yeah, all kinds of things. So I, I was very interested in working with women. Um, so I worked, worked with women who've been trafficked. I actually... I have continued as a volunteer, so I work with, with women um, who work in street-based sex work in South London, and that's something I've continued. So I sort of, as I moved away from kind of frontline work, I wanted to do something that that, that kept me connected to that world. Um, so I've been doing a night shift in, in a place called Brixton, which is in South London, uh, for probably nine, ten years now, something like that. So I've stayed connected to some of those things, but yes, had a very different career journey ending up in tech. Yeah, and you did some investing along the way. Was that under a fund, or how did you get in, into that side of the table? I worked for Clear Clearly so, which is a uh, which is a, a, a impact investment bank in the UK. So basically, that was um, and and particularly working with uh, small companies that were that were trying to raise impact investment from angels. Uh, so and we had a group of angel investors who were interested in making positive impact in the world as well as making money. Uh, so that was my first kind of introduction to this idea that 
you didn't really have to just work for an NGO if you wanted to do great things in the world. Some of the ways that you could do great things in the world are through commercial, uh, through businesses. And that was really, uh, I think, the thing that put me on the path to finding what three words. Now, you, you made kind of a transition uh, to, to kind of this commercial side. Uh, but what what have you learned about yourself through this journey where you were focused on the impact side? Oh, so much. I learned so much all the time. Uh, I, I definitely learned that uh, I needed something hard. I needed to do something hard. The things I've enjoyed most in my career have been really hard things, uh, and they've been challenging and exciting. Uh, I think I also learned that you have to listen to the people around you for advice. That's how you get better in leaps and bounds. If you just listen to yourself, you might get better slowly, but the way to get better quickly and to really improve yourself is to listen to people around you. And I was really lucky early in my career to have these kind of amazing mentors who kind of picked up along the way in my various projects who are happy to give me advice, but also feedback, right? And say, in that meeting, maybe that was not the way to play this. And those kind of moments of surrounding yourself with people who give you a reflection of yourself, and sometimes that's positive and sometimes it's constructive, that actually was a really helpful thing, I think, to learn. And I'm really glad I learned it early because it's meant that my experience of what three words, I've been able to draw on that and hopefully, you know, surround myself with people who who give me feedback and help me improve and learn and get better. Yeah, I think it, that's that's really good advice. I mean, throughout my career, I've also uh, have always managed to kind of, not necessarily on purpose, but find a mentor and kind of absorb their brain, everything they know. Uh, but it's also good, you know, to set yourself up and just for the audience, uh, maybe younger listening, kind of building their career or planning things. It's it's always good to get used to getting feedback because you you won't kind of hide uh, away from the negative things and you'll try to improve. So that's, I think that's great. Now that brings us to what three words. Uh, what led you there? How did you end up there? Before we dive into what three words really is. Yeah. So that was. I was at Clearly So, uh, and, and we were seeing amazing entrepreneurs all the time who had incredible ideas that were going to change the world. And What Three Words was just one of those ideas that, that you know, when it came across, I, I think I, I saw a video pitch first uh, in a kind of early stage pitch competition, and it was an idea that just hooked me. It's really hard to get out of your head because it's actually incredibly elegant as an idea. It sounds pretty simple and it's really elegant and yet it's potentially world changing. Uh, it, you know, it's one of those things where, look, I grew up in the middle of nowhere and people couldn't find the house. Sure, that's a problem. And yeah, it's annoying when the pizza is not hot because your driver was lost looking for the entrance to the building in your block of flats. But also if you think about what it's like in a refugee camp or um, an informal settlement where you don't have addresses at all, how do you tell the midwife where to come when you're in labor? How do you call an ambulance if you, you know, or if you're in trouble in, say, there's been an earthquake, how do you, after an earthquake, communicate quickly about where locations are because street addresses aren't usable because the streets have changed. Everything looks totally different. And, you know, communicating 16-digit uh, lat-longs over a phone or a radio is, is pretty complicated. And so the idea was incredible to me. It was basically just with what three words you could solve a huge global problem which everybody has encountered at some point everybody's got lost because there was something wrong with an address or a location at some point uh in a beautifully elegant way and it just it just hooked me now you joined a few years in talk a little bit about how the company was started so chris uh who is the co-founder and the ceo so chris ran a music company uh and he used to send musicians around the world to gigs and concerts and things and of course if you're sending musicians to gigs sometimes they'll be needing to go to a stage entrance uh or a particular entrance to the festival or you know a, a wedding in a villa halfway up a mountain that doesn't have a street address and his musicians were just getting lost all the time so chris was actually solving that problem which is how do I stop my musicians getting lost and the drummer going to the wrong wedding? Uh, and he actually started giving GPS coordinates because uh, yeah, it makes sense, right? If you, if you haven't got an address, you could use a GPS coordinate. We've all got smartphones that can accept GPS coordinates. The problem is once you ask a human to type in a 16 digit GPS coordinate into a map, chances of them actually doing that perfectly are pretty low, right? It's, it's, it's like when you have a Wi-Fi password, you know, and you're typing in, you type it wrong five times and you don't know what you're doing wrong. You just have to keep going. With a GPS coordinate, it's also possible that when you type it in, you don't even know you've gone wrong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, an, it's a GPS coordinate. It's a number. Whether or not it's, it's in the right bit of Rome or not, you don't know. So he was trying to solve the problem. He tried with GPS coordinates. He tried to get the London music business using GPS coordinates and sort of failed with that. Uh, so then basically went from that of how do you shorten these? How do you make these easy to communicate? Uh, and with uh, a friend who's a mathematician, he basically came up with words. You'd use words. So you could take a 16 digit string of numbers and to turn that into something communicable, you could turn it into words. So instead of saying, meet me at 25 degrees, nine minutes for whatever, you know, 16 digit latitude, longitude, you could say, meet me at 
apple banana spoon much easier to say i can repeat that instantly i can put that into my car i could put it into my phone uh, so it's all the power of gps right which is that universal works the same everywhere you go accurate doesn't need a building it could be a spot for yoga on the park it could be a you know a, a wedding in a villa in italy uh, whatever it is you can use a gps coordinate but it's communicable unlike gps coordinates now um you're the chief commercial officer right so you're responsible for the business uh, talk a little bit about kind of your day to day and what is the business model of the company? Yeah, so it's the day to day is pretty varied. Uh, it's, yeah, which is why I'm not bored here. Uh, and I guess the key thing to understand with what three words is what we did, the way we did it is we basically took the world, we divided it into 57 trillion squares. So three meters on my side of the world, like 10 foot on yours. Uh, each one is three meters and each one has got assigned an address made of three words from the dictionary. So left clown pasta, mm -hmm. update park shark. Update Park Shark is the entrance to a working space in Sunnyvale. Uh, Field Count Soap is the entrance to our office in London. So every three meter square has been pre-assigned one of these addresses. So you can download the app and look up yours and they already exist. So you don't have to choose them. Your front door, your back door, the spot on the beach, they've already got a what three words address. You just look it up and you'll, you'll see those words. Now they're completely unique behind the scenes. It, you know, ties to a GPS coordinate, 16 digit number. But there are 57 trillion of these addresses. They're all totally unique. And basically what we've done is we've made an algorithm that, that, that does that. And the way that works with businesses is, um, so it's always free for people. So consumers use our website and our app. They're free, you download them. You know, people use it for all kinds of things, meeting up with friends. They might use it to tell their friends where they live. They might use it to, to get a delivery. It's always free for people. Uh, but we charge businesses who use it. So, for example, car companies. Uh, we're increasingly, we're in millions of cars now around the world. Mercedes was first. Uh, if you get in your Mercedes, you can say, hey, Mercedes, what three words? Update Park Shark. And it will navigate you to that exact location. Uh, so that's using, a, a, we have an API and an SDK. And those are licensed to businesses. So the businesses that license our software pay for it, which means people use it for free. And it also means we're able to provide it for free for NGOs and emergency services. So we charge businesses that use it, and that could be ride hailing apps or car companies or delivery companies or logistics companies or food delivery apps. Uh, but it means it can be free for people to use. And so people just use what three words in everyday life. Gotcha. And, um, you know, the company has raised uh, over 100 million, about 119 million, according to PitchBook. Uh, and there are a number of strategic investors involved. Uh, what motivated them to come into you know, ownership in the company? Uh, it varies by investor, but we, yeah, we're very lucky that we have a really amazing group of investors. And I think in some cases it was because they were already customers and they'd seen the reaction. <laughs> so that's quite a powerful thing. If you put what three words in the car and you see what a brilliant reaction it has from users who love it and start using the voice navigation in their car, which maybe they weren't using before because putting an address in with your voice is a nightmare uh, and often people would just mm -hmm. turn to their phone. Suddenly, if you can see that you know people are using this in the car, they love it, the feedback is amazing, the press reaction was great. It sort of gives you a sense of, oh, this company might be onto something. This might be quite a big thing. So some of it was customers who were already customers who liked the idea of kind of partnering more closely with us uh, and others it's ones who are going to become customers and of course there's so much that you get out of a strategic relationship right it means you're much closer together you've got much more access so you, you know if you're if we're trying something out we've got these strategic investors and we can say oh we're trying this thing in drones do you want to be part of it Should we you know it's not public yet but we're going to play with it and it lets you build things together you know some of our voice work that we've done recently was was in collaboration with mercedes as an investor and as, as a customer, but you know, that investor relationship allows you to try stuff. You can, you can build things together. You can learn from each other. So that's a really, really positive uh, thing. And yeah, we are, we're really lucky that we've got strategics across a whole spectrum. You know, geographically, we've got um, investors from places like Japan. Uh, so for example, Sony, but we've also got sector investors. So for example, Inca, who own Ikea, uh, Aramex, big delivery company in the Middle East. And then, uh, you know, for example, Subaru and, and Mercedes in the car world as well. So a real range of investors have been really lucky. Uh, to have. Now, is it integrated into Google Maps, Apple Maps, etc. as well? Uh, no, so you can use it with Google Maps. If you download the app and you then type in update Park Shark and you click navigate, you can then send that to Apple or Google. I send it to my watch. I use an Apple watch and I, I send my three word addresses to my Apple watch and get directions. Uh, but for now, as a consumer, you'd have to send it across from our app as a starting point. Okay. So they can, so anybody listening, they need, they should download what three words and then be able to interact with it there. Gotcha. And then have you started integrating? We haven't seen much of it yet in the US, let's say. Um, I think it's more popular in Europe, European startup, of course. Um, 
kind of what's your plans? What what's next? Uh, when are you when are you pushing in? Anything else? Anything you want to announce that's big that's coming? Yeah. So or allude to? <laughs> yeah. So the US is very interesting for us. So you're right. I mean, Europe obviously is you know, we're pretty big in the UK, pretty big in Germany, uh, also Asia. So India is very big for us. Japan and Korea particularly as well. Uh, really amazing things going on in Japan and Korea right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the US has been interesting. It actually for us started in North America. Actually started with Canada. So Canada uh, was a place that started using what through its emergency services. So of course, if you imagine if you're on a mountain and you phone 911 and it can't automatically share your location, much as all the films with, uh, you know, cops in have this thing where you phone and you instantly know where everybody is. Doesn't always quite work. That sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there will be times when somebody, for whatever reason, can't automatically transmit their location, in which case, if you don't know the street address and if there isn't a street address, you're usually reverting to I guess I'm halfway up this trail. I saw a thing back there. There's a big tree, which is crazy in, a, in an emergency, right? Because seconds can mean the difference between life and death. So we've got a lot of emergency services around the world using us. But actually, Canada, probably a year and a half ago, maybe, started um, adopting what three words. Um, and then it started now to, to come into the US. So the LA Fire Department actually is a great example of that. They they piloted what three words very intensely. They used it in hundreds of rescues before they kind of officially said, yeah, we're now, we're now going to use what three words. And they've been using it to rescue hikers who are, are lost and maybe injured and, and need things like, um, air ambulance support or, or paramedics to, to rescue them. So that's been incredible. And in that we're expecting that to continue. We've also got quite a lot of cars launching. And um, so some that are live in the US. So yeah, you can use it in Mercedes, but Mitsubishi actually did a really nice North American launch recently with what three words completely offline. Mm -hmm. So you can use it offline in the car, which is a really lovely build by them. Um, with our partnership with TomTom. Tom. So we have partnerships with companies like TomTom Tom and Here Maps. So lots more car things coming, quite a few big announcements. Our most recent car announcement was Lamborghini, which we enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed that announcement. So Lamborghini's Very nice. two words with Alexa. So more more to come on Car World and um, watch this space. Well, so so Rivian has uh, Amazon's Alexa built into their platform. They're not using CarPlay or Android, um, uh, Android Auto. Are you integrated with Rivian as well? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, okay. Rivian's actually a really interesting one because if you think about off-roading, it's a really exa lovely example. Right, where, exactly. And if you're meeting, for, meeting friends, right, you're going camping together, wouldn't it be nice if you all showed up at the right place and you weren't phoning each other being like, where are you and what can you see? And you know. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, Tesla also. Are you integrated in Tesla? They have their own system, obviously. Uh, not yet in Tesla. I'm really excited to share something a long time in the making with you. My first online course. Over the years, I've trained thousands of founders through my book, Accelerated Startup, and my infamous Pitching Like a Boss workshops and keynotes. Like I've done for thousands of founders, I will teach you how to pitch like a boss. And for the first time ever, I will be doing it in a cohort-based online course. This is the world's most comprehensive and intensive course for entrepreneurs and future founders on pitching. It will help you craft the perfect pitch for investors and customers. It will also help you master public speaking. Get funded, communicate your vision to grow your team and dramatically improve sales of any product. Check out golem.net slash pitching. That's G-O-L-O-M-B dot net slash pitching for more information. See you there. And so I, I, guess, I guess a part, a big part of getting the word out about, you know, no pun intended or pun intended about uh, what three words is, is getting the consumer awareness, right? So if somebody is in an emergency situation, they, they should already know about what three words and have it installed, right? If they're out in the middle of nowhere, um, how do you, how do you, how do you looking at uh, awareness and kind of building the consumer demand? So it's a bit of a mix, a kind of a few different things. One is uh, we do partnerships for that a lot. So because a lot of the companies we work with really love what three words, right? Once they've integrated it, they want people to use it. So they, they shout about it. And that really helps us because we're, you know, we're only 150 people or so, mostly in London, and we're trying to do a global address system in every, you know, every place in the world. And so, you know, we, we can't do it all on our own. So our partners are definitely a huge part of that of, of then spreading the word as well. Mm. Uh, emergency services too, you know, emergency services themselves. And um, we've seen this a lot in the UK over the last few years, really saying, you know, download what three words it could save your life, which is obviously quite a powerful message for people. And, and you know, we hear, I mean, there's a, we have a wonderful Slack channel actually in the company. It's one of my favorite things is that if I have a bad day, I look at this channel because it basically aggregates from social media every time somebody says what three words would use to save my life or something like this wow. and it's just a really beautiful thing because you get so many of these every day now that when you go into that channel you're like okay so you know i had a bit of a bad day maybe i was a bit tired and didn't go to plan but you know what like th this person her grandmother wasn't very well and she used what three words to find her and, and said it saved her life that's a pretty powerful thing so we see a lot of that which is a, a way of getting consumer awareness up 
uh, we do our own ads. So we do um, ads, kind of digital ads. We're doing uh, TV ads in some places and billboards and things like that. And then the other bit is organic use. And that's because consumers become obsessed. It's one of these things where some people just fall in love with this. And once they've used it, they become these uh, evangelical people about it, right? Because if, if it, once you've used what three words a few times, every time you're not given a what three words address and you're lost, it's so frustrating because you're like, this is a, this is a solved problem for me. So we see this, you know, for example, in the UK now, so many times Airbnb hosts, if, if the Airbnb host doesn't already give the what three words address, people will ask them and be like, can you give me the what three words address? Because, and that's this lovely organic user thing, which is that as a user, once you've used it, it's solved a problem for you. You do fall in love and you want to use it more. So you start saying, can you give me the what three words address? And then they educate other users and you just get this lovely flywheel, which which we've seen now for quite a while in, in places like the UK and, and, and a few other places. So that's pretty exciting. So how big is what three words? How many users? Kind of tell, tell, give us a little bit of an idea of scale and how fast uh, you're growing with the users. We don't share user numbers, uh, but I mean, for context, well, we've done the whole world. Obviously, the whole world is done. Uh, and so that every country in the world, you can use what three words, uh, which is in 50 languages. Uh, it's used in about 170 countries. Uh, so it's, it's got pretty great coverage. You know, of course, usage is concentrated in a few, probably 10 markets at the moment that are really, really big for us. Uh, but it's used, I mean, yeah, all kinds of ways organically as well. You know, we might never have focused very much on a particular country in, in Southeast Asia, but you'll have organic use because it solves a problem there as well. And actually, our language team have been a key part of this, of really localizing, because the languages that we have, they're not translations. So apple, banana, spoon in English is not apple, banana, spoon in French or Arabic or Ukrainian or whatever it is. It's a totally different um, set of words. And that's really important, right? Because you want to make it as usable as possible. So, for example, in, uh, in uh, German, mm -hmm. the most common German words will be in Vienna and in Berlin, where people speak German. If you go to the middle of Siberia, you'll find that the German words are quite long. Right. Uh, same thing with English. You'll find long English words in the middle of the Sahara or middle of the ocean. So, you know, in the middle of the ocean, you might have like words like deconstructing or overwhelming or stegosaurus, whereas in London, you might have words like left clown pasta. So you do things like that. And that actually takes a huge amount of work because this is a very manual thing. We do it with hundreds, well, thousands of linguists around the world. So when you're launching a new language, mm. you can't just hire native speakers. You have to hire linguists who understand how that language works uh, to create it. And that's been an incredible experience. It's taken us, I don't know, eight, eight years or so to get to 50 languages. And it's, yeah. They might so it's not a random, it's not a random what three words. It's a very much algorithmic. And then I guess that was my other question is that you have three word combinations for, you said 50 languages for every point in the world, right? Yeah. So if landmass of the world, we've only done the C in English and Korean so far. Uh, okay. We're quite big in Korea. Uh, so uh, yeah, the landmass of the world is done in, in all 50 languages. And yes, they're not random. There's actually two, uh, there are two different um, things to kind of know about how it works. So yes, if you look up your house, I mean, look, my old house was plug vines bucket got you to the door uh, and it, it feels random and so as a user it's it's fine to understand it as random but yes the first rule is that based on that language uh, more common words will go where people live who speak that language and uh, the other rule is actually an error correction rule so for example uh, toffee branched pyramid is in the uk and coffee branched pyramid is in india so what we've done is we've shuffled mm. similar combinations uh, far apart from each other you know as, as much as possible and that allows you to know if you've made a mistake so if i um, am in my car and i say hey mercedes you know i'm asking it to take me to toffee branched pyramid and someone's talking in the back and it doesn't hear toffee and it hears coffee mm -hmm. the good thing is my car can be really intelligent there and be like you're probably not trying to drive to india did you mean toffee which is in the uk so you've got that kind of error correction built in and in our app you'll see it so if you make some typing errors uh, you misspell something you miss you miss, you know if you if you speak it and it doesn't understand you perfectly you'll see three options you get suggestions and you'll be able to say oh yes i said frogs not frog or toffee not coffee and you'll be able to select that and that's that's we call that auto suggest and that's actually a really key part of this which is that right now when you do street address entry it's actually so hard for it to get right with voice so for example um 241st street if i say to alexa take me to 241st street is that 240 space first street or is that 241 241st Street. Who knows? Could be either. They're said identically. How right. Like supposed to know the difference. Whereas what we've tried to do is make it so right that it's instantly obvious. And if it's uh, it's obviously right, and if not, you've got a bit of an error correction instantly, so you don't navigate to the wrong place. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's great. Now, is there any application of this for autonomous vehicles? I love this question. Yes. So I guess the way to think about this is 
right now, if you are in the back of an Uber or a Lyft or, or an equivalent uh, and you've got a human driver, in that last mile, when they can't quite find the entrance to your flat because it's like hidden or it's you know around the back of the building and Google Maps doesn't really understand where it is, you can tell them, right? You can say, oh, yeah, sorry, this always happens. Let's just, just go around the block and there's like a little small gate there. That's where you want to drop me off. Now, that works well for a human. That does not work when you're talking to a robot, right? You can't be like, oh, yeah, sorry, you know, look out for the little gate. You, When you're talking to a robot, you really need to know that when you typed in that, you know, pick up and drop off location, particularly drop off, because for pick up, at least you can find the current location of the phone, right? But for destination, you've got to put in an address. That's how you navigate. If mm-hmm. I'm putting in that address, it would be really helpful if that address was accurate enough that the autonomous vehicle can take me to the right place. Because the last thing I want when I'm in an autonomous vehicle is to be in the wrong place because I can't fix it by driving. Right? If I'm driving the car, I can fix it myself. Or if I'm talking to a person driving the car, I can fix it. So autonomous vehicles, absolutely, but also autonomous delivery. So if you think about little autonomous delivery robots or drones, again, an address is not accurate enough for that. If I if I gave you know my postcode in my building in, in, in London, I mean, it's the correct building, but it's right in the middle of the building. If I want them to come to my balcony, how do I explain exactly where that is? So as we look to that, that future of autonomous delivery and autonomous driving, it becomes so much more important than it is right now. It's important right now that we get to the right place. But the minute you make that robot taking you or delivering something instead of a person, it's so much more important. No, I mean, that, that's that's really interesting because you get a much more precise location, um, 10 foot by 10 foot, you know, three meter by three meter. Uh, location um, and it could be you know in when we're talking about cities we're talking about block size buildings uh, you, you don't necessarily have to um, you know you don't necessarily get to send it to the uh, to the front door right so that that's quite interesting when companies start to catch fire and blitz scale and look for capital to fuel that growth or look to find the right exit strategy they often seek the counsel of investment bankers At Drakestar Partners, we work with some of the leading companies in global tech on capital raises, M&A, corporate carve-outs, SPACs, and much more. And we're pretty good at it. Our team of over 100 technology sector experts across nine offices in six countries is comprised of not only career bankers, but experienced executive, venture investors, and technologists. Drakestar Partners is the number one ranked and fastest growing mid-market investment bank across the US and Europe. While I focus on mobility and energy transition sector, along with all things Silicon Valley, my partners from the Pacific to the Atlantic and around the world lead in software, media, communications, and everything in between. Learn more about us at drakestar.com. Now let's talk a little bit about aviation. Um, in aviation, I have a little bit of left seat time, so this is something that, that I like to dive into a little bit, um, especially when we're talking about some, you know, there's been so much excitement in the last couple of years about VTOLs and, and kind of next generation of aviation. Um, talk a little bit about how this might apply um, as well. So I think in a world in which you're talking about um for example, uh, air taxis in that kind of a world. I think the principle is the same, that it would be really helpful to plan my journey well. Although it might seem that you don't really need what three words because you're going fixed point to fixed point, right? So if I'm going to an air taxi and I've got to go to a little helipad, get in my air taxi and go to a fixed point. But what would be really nice is as a user, when I'm at home and I'm planning my journey, I could just say to my watch, take me to Apple Banana Spoon. And then it automatically passes that location to my navigation system, which might then say, great, go to that air taxi pad and it'll direct me there. I get in, I get out, and then I get the rest of the directions to walk the rest of the way on my fo- on my watch or my phone or my smart glasses. So that's a really interesting flow, which is that however we're traveling, whether it's in the air or on the ground, it would be really nice if we could just input one destination once and then all of our machines would talk to each other and, and, and work out where to take us because the machines can pass coordinates perfectly between them, right? It's machine to machine, so they can pass coordinates. So that's one one world. We actually already do see uh, what's through as used in kind of aviation hobbying. So, for example, um, you know, hot air ballooning, for example, and uh, small planes, people are using it to communicate about locations. So, for example, uh, whether they're planning a trip or they're getting collected after a trip or they're going to a particular airfield. We actually, one of the LA fire rescue stories was about um, a small plane that had crashed and they used what three words to find them. So there's all these kinds of things where any time it's helpful to be specific about a location and there's a communication involved. So if there's no communication, you really don't need what three words because so with humans, if, if there's just two machines, cool, they're going to share GPS coordinates, no problem. But the minute there's a human, a, a voice, a radio, a wedding invitation, a plan to meet tomorrow where you're sending an address, that's where what three words is useful. So it could be anything when, you, when you're planning any kind of journey to go anywhere on the, in the air or on the ground. Now, um, it's interesting. So do you envision your system working with aviation GPS systems? 
for navigation in some way? So the way the way the system works now is it will so for example on the phone it's just using the GPS uh, location system in the phone. We from our perspective as long as the phone knows where it is you can use it to navigate with what three words right and and our algorithm takes three words turns them into GPS coordinates or takes GPS coordinates and turns them into three words and that's all it really does. Um whatever location system you're using you can do that with and 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 the interesting thing around that is of course in, in the future indoor positioning will become more of a thing. So now you don't really use uh, you know, positioning indoors because you're probably aware, you know, that that blue dot with that huge kind of circle around it when you're inside because it doesn't know where you are and that's because it can't see the sky. Uh, but I, it, that is coming. Some, you know, some people are working on this. Very, very interesting companies are working on this. And that will become a really interesting thing for us in the future. So for now, we'd say use what three words to get to the door. Use what three words outside. Use it to get to the entrance. But of course, in the future, when indoor positioning becomes much more of a thing, think about malls, think about big stadiums, think about big sporting events in like the Olympics. There's all kinds of ways that this could be really, really interesting once you get to a level of being able to do indoor positioning as well. We're not solving that piece. We're going to wait for that someone else to solve that. But then it becomes what through us becomes really useful indoors in the future. Yeah. And then you can certainly map uh, the same the same uh, square square meter uh, area indoors. Uh, it's interesting. I was just at a game you know, a uh, Stanford football game with uh, my nephews, my my son. And uh, yeah, going around the stadium had to really, you know, they're, they're young teenagers, but had to really go with them instead of saying, meet me there, meet me here. It's very difficult to navigate, you know, a big stadium like that. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting application. We see that a lot with big stadiums already using it for entrances. Um, so, uh, you know, just saying, here's the ticket office, here's the entrance for, you know, this particular thing, the parking entrance, but also for accessibility. If you're in a wheelchair, you need to know where the entrance is that's access accessible, right? That not all the entrances are accessible. Some of them have got stairs. And it's incredibly frustrating if you're being sent around a building because nobody can explain to you where the accessible entrance is or where the blue badge parking is. So there are loads of those cases which aren't just about, you know, every day. They're also pretty important sometimes in using it to navigate around a big, big event venue or a stadium. So in the UK, for example, the O2 Stadium is a huge music venue and they've got what three words on their website so that, you know, whichever the drop-off point, you want to meet your kids after a gig, whatever it is you're doing, you've got mm. three words addresses for the different points around the stadium that's perfect now what's next for the company so growth uh we're, we're in this incredible growth stage now it's uh my favorite bit of the company it's it's been quite a journey so far but this is uh by far the most exciting because all the numbers are bigger right the user numbers are bigger and you can try things and it makes a huge difference and uh the customer numbers are bigger and we're in loads of cars so growth is the thing and um, we're trying not to get too big in terms of people uh, you know we're a tech company so you know we haven't got huge operational kind of the ex execution logistical things that many many companies have uh, so we're trying to keep the team as small as possible but yeah growth internationally we want to launch more markets we actually went live with our first korean and japanese tv ads a couple of weeks ago which was a big moment really exciting having seen lots of growth and adoption in those markets being able to do consumer ads there was pretty exciting so more kind of consumer ads in a lot of the countries that we're launching and and more partnerships so we've been big in cars for a while and and, and that's taking off we're increasingly getting big in ride hailing uh, coming to some ride hailing apps near you quite soon, I think, uh, and quite a few things in that kind of. So it's it's ride hailing, it's uh, navigation apps, it's mapping, and then it's also logistics and delivery. So hoping over the next few years that that some of these things will be taking off in the US, like they've taken off elsewhere as well. Well, I'm very much looking forward to that. Now, knowing what you know now, you're you're you've, you're well into your career. What advice would you give your young self just starting out? Uh, well, one would definitely still do what three words. One of the best decisions I ever made in my whole life. Uh, but another would probably be, uh, I think, get used to patience. Um, patience is not uh, a thing I have masses of. I've had to learn about it as I grow up. Uh, and look, it's sometimes a, a great thing because impatience helps you achieve things at speed. Uh, but I do talk very quickly and I do things very quickly. And, and I think as a, a bit more of a grown up, I've definitely learned the value of taking things slower and bringing people with you and, and taking a bit more time. Um, and things like this, what's three words for me? It was such an instant thing as soon as I saw it, I just thought it was incredible. But it has taken time. You can't change behavior overnight. And this is something we're, we're asking people to change something they've taken for granted for hundreds of years, which is how addresses work, right? Addresses were designed for mail delivery and we haven't touched them since. We, we're using the same address for mail delivery to put into a ride hailing app and it just wasn't designed for that. So it breaks and doesn't work, but, but people got used to it. So we're trying to ask people to take something they've got used to for hundreds of years and say, Here's a new way to do it, which feels kind of weird. When someone says, meet me at Pencil Buttercup's Dragon, you're like, that sounds a bit strange. So you're, you're asking people to change their behavior and you can't do that overnight. And you have to do that as this kind of colossal 
team effort and belief, which is our team, but also all of our partners out there in the world getting this used by their customers. And that takes time. And I think, uh, yeah, patience is a thing I've acquired more of as I've got older. And, and I guess t- knowing knowing that things take their time and, and big things and important things do take time, but but they're worth it and they're worth waiting for. Well, that's great advice to finish on. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time, Claire. Uh, busy, busy times for you and the growth and um, really interesting. I, I learned a lot today about, uh, about what three words and the fact that it's much more precise type of navigation. Um, and that's really interesting for the transportation segment, for anybody trying to get anywhere. So really appreciate you being on Accelerated and, uh, and hope to talk to you in the future. Thank you. That was my conversation with Claire Jones, the Chief Commercial Officer at What Three Words. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give us five stars in your favorite podcast platform and share it with your friends. We have much more in store for this season of Accelerated. We'll see you on the next episode. And in the meantime, you can always find me at golem.net.